Well, I'm not finding elk, but that is a big monster moose. Unfortunately, all I have is a wide angle lens, so this is as close as I can get. So I can get a picture of him with my phone. hiking along in the ridge line back up here hopped out into this nice golf course looking grass hoping to run into an elk no elk, there's definitely moose okay so there's a big old moose down here in the lake I was up in the clearing and I'm going to try to walk down the inside of these trees pop out and see if we can get a better picture a little bit of video of him so about, I don't know, 10, 15 feet in that direction is an opening. So if I can just follow this little path right down here on the inside of these trees, it's noisy, but he won't see me, at least. He'll probably smell and hear me, but see right there's the opening. If I travel just along the inside of these trees, maybe if I come over here where there's grass, I should be able to get a little bit closer. Fortunately, the wind is blowing up the hill, so at least he won't smell me. Just beautiful country up here. If I can just keep the trees between me and him, I should be able to get closer, but not, not so close that it's stupid and I'm going to get stepped on. That's a big moose for a Utah moose. I'm just going to have to sit here for a sec. Try one more tree level and then I'm not getting any closer. definitely see me. I wasn't being quiet, that's for sure. Utah moose still don't get quite even close to as big as Alaska moose. Their spoons just aren't as big. For Utah, this is medium large. This is a fair sized moose. I'm out here hunting and I figured I would talk a little bit about concealment. Um, snipers, when they create a hide, will have a window in a building that looks out into the area that they want to see. They'll pull themselves deep inside that room, inside the shadow. They'll put a sniper veil, some black cloth or something, either kind of close or set back. And they'll sit behind it and look through all those things. The reason being is 
there's an open area right here. And if I'm walking on the easy path right along the outside of that open area, everything out there can see me. But I'm, when I'm walking right here, 10, 15 feet inside of the trees, there's trails in here and it's kind of crunchy, but nothing can see me. I come up this far and I was able to see a deer silhouetted on the other side. it and watched it. It looked around for a minute and it did its thing and it walked back in the tree line. My point is when it comes to concealment you can stay inside the shadow and the tree line you can see outside and not get caught. A little hunting tip on there. The other thing there's a couple different approaches on camouflage patterns. I'm us using Kuiu camouflage patterns. Um, you kind of want to break up straight lines, V's, human form, and you kind of want it to be mostly the same top to bottom with one exception. The Navy SEALs figured out that if you have solid color pants, tan pants, and a leafy colored top, that at a distance you look like a tree. Because if you look at a distance, I'm going to turn this around, <clears throat> look at a distance at that tree or any of these trees right over here you notice that it's a uh, solid color tan with a leafy top so anyway just something to think about something to think about when it comes to how you dress whether or not you want to go full camouflage for hunting or maybe you're doing some kind of a urban escape and evasion, then maybe there's nothing wrong with tan pants and a green shirt. It'll be socially appropriate and not look camouflage and still be camouflage. On this tip, I've been trying to think of things that I can teach that are outdoorsman and survivor related. One thing that's coming to mind while I'm up here is just topographical lines and how to read a map. If I take my hand this is the way we teach soldiers and it basically creates a mountain range I've got a saddle a spur a draw a peak a valley and if I draw a line around this same altitude that's a topographical line if I draw a line around the next level that's another topographical line so when you see topographical lines really close to each other you know that it's steep but when you see them here and then they have to go clear here before you get the next one you know that it's shallow or it's not as steep so if I have this altitude right here I got steep 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 topographical lines but I might have one here and the next one really low and the next one really low so with that in mind I'm trying to decide as I go up this canyon as I go up this canyon how I want to deal with this lake so if you look so I'm put this thing back. If you look right here, so my location, I've been moving up along these lakes. If I come along to here, there's a lake here. There's some super steep or highly connected topographical lines that lets me know I'm going up a mountain here. Or there's a lake another path here so if I was trying to pick a path if I can continue where I'm going and go up around this side it might be marshy down here but it should be less steep if I go to the right I'm gonna have to stay close to the lake otherwise I'm gonna climb right up a super steep mountain so anyway it's kind of a little thought on topographical topographic lines and how to deal with them even right here you can see this is going right up the side of a mountain which is over here to my right and if I continue on my path and kind of go in this direction I should be able to keep from climbing right up a mountain because if my goal is to go to this lake right here and I continue straight 
it's going to be less up and down. If I hang it right, it's going to go right up this mountain or right down that mountain. Now maybe, maybe my goal is to get some altitude up on top of this peak and get a lick in the valley. Well then I want to go up this draw and all on top of the spur or maybe up the spur depending on when I get close and look at it. But it kind of depends on what you want to do. that is some fresh scat. You can see how clear or how shiny it looks. So I know there's elk in here somewhere. Okay, so we're at the, the place that I was hiking to. Right here's the lake. This is the peak with the steep part. This was the shallow approach. So if we look at this. There's that lake. Right in front of the arrow is the really steep part that I was talking about. And here's the smooth part. So hopefully this kind of gives you a real world example of topographical maps. I find that this thing to be shadowed on. So right here is the steep. Here's the smooth. Right? Let's see this. There we go. Right there's the steep. Here's the smooth. And this peak right here, or this mountain right there, is that mountain right there. You can see how nasty steep that was. And you can tell it's steep on the map because of how close the topographical lines are together. Right there. And then there's that lake right in front of me. So this lets me know if I head over here, I'm going to go up over a ridge and drop down into a lake. All right, hopefully that is helpful. Okay, let's say that you're in the mountains, you don't have a compass, you have a map, or you have local knowledge from Google Earth because you were planning ahead and researched it, but you don't, ha you don't know how to figure out how to get yourself out of the pr predicament that you're in. Maybe you smashed your compass, you can't figure it out. Well, there's a, multi a multitude of ways that you can find north. One of them is with a spare magnetic compass in your belt, one of them is to use a, the, the stars to figure out where north and south is. You can use Polaris for north and the Southern Cross for south. One of them is to use a stick, put it in the ground, draw an arrow or connect the top of the shadow, wait 15 minutes, connect it again. Those other two techniques we'll show in another video. But once you found out where north and south is, what do you do next? Okay. One thing is hand railing. And another thing that you can do is terrain association, okay? Okay, let's say that you find yourself lost in an area by a big lake with a mountain to the north, all right? And I can arbitrarily grab this big bald mountain. Let's say that this big bald mountain right here is the one that you know that you're at. And you're by a lake. There's a ton of lakes this side and a ton of lakes that side. Maybe you know you came in from the east of a road or the west of a road. Now this map is currently oriented north, so this can be north, south, east, west. There's a major road right here, 
And if you came from the east heading west, and you're by a big lake, then what you can do is set this map on the ground and either find north or say, I see the big mountain here. I'm going to twist this map until the big mountain is here on my map. And I'm at the lake here, okay? Or I know the road is behind me. The big mountain is in front of me. I've got to be somewhere between the road and the big mountain. This is called terrain association. The next thing that you're going to want to do, once you have a general gist of where you're at, either by identifying two known, uh, known places or by using a sundial compass method or the stars from the north and south, is to figure out how to get yourself out. Once you've done that and you say, there's a lake here, I could be one of these two or three lakes, but I know that this, this big mountain is in this direction, if I'm here, that would be the south east of me. And I need to get back to the road to uh, get my way home. What I can do is either walk straight left, which would be east, until I hit a road, and then handrail that road until I come back to my original location. Or maybe I can climb to the mountain, reset this, decide where I'm going to go. Or I see a lot of trails inside of here. They're kind of squiggly. I can walk until I run into one of those trails, follow it, handrail until I run into an intersection, and then know exactly where I'm at. So just because you don't have a compass doesn't mean that you can't still use local knowledge or a map in order to find out where you're at. So when you get the chance, Take a map of the local area, go down to uh, a REI or a local GIS, uh, geological um, mapping company of some sort. Get a map local to where you're at. Sit it out, find the prominent known points, and figure out where they are in relation to you. Once you figure that out, twist your map until your map looks like the real world. Because remember, this is just a micro model of the real world. Once you've twisted it to where it looks like the real world, it's just like playing a game, okay? I know the big mountain's here. I know the river's here. I know the road's there. So I am going to walk to one of those linear things, like a train track, a road, a trail, and I'm going to handrail that road to the right or left until I get to the location that I'm looking for. All right, try to employ handrailing. Try to take it out and use it. Try to find yourself on maps just using the real world, using what you observe and you see, and your map reading and navigation skills will substantially increase almost instantaneously. Hopefully this has been valuable to you. If, you, if it has, please hit the subscribe button. If you got any more questions about stuff like this, or you're going to want to see any more topics like this, let us know down in the comment section. And this has been hand railing and using natural... Uh, Real World Stuff by Tyler White. Thank you for watching.